there's an original work on the table. There what is. what are your obligations and what are you chucking the bin? Well, there, 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 there's no obligations. I mean, it's it's really a question of uh, just inspiration and. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 not like it's so well known here in America that we're uh, we're doing something that's somehow so precious that you know we're going to be lambasted for for changing the small thing. I think you know the sky's wide open, but the series did uh, you know touch us all like. Danny saw it as a as, as a kids and as did Greg. So I mean, our, our obligation really is to just sort of honor the dreams of, of when these guys saw it and like what it meant to them. And you know, for me who saw it as an adult, that's kind of like a good balance because it's the fresh eyes and figuring out how to update it and hopefully create something that, that will, you know, obviously it's designed for an older audience, but to, 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 to touch people the way the original did. Yeah. yeah. No, I think uh, what I'd like to keep as watching it as a kid. Um, it, it felt like people down the block. It felt like people I knew. I related to the characters. They were, they were everybody. They weren't. Uh, there was no leotards. There was no um, special weaponry. It was. It was. It was literally um, feet on the ground, normal people who were alienated at first, and then found out that, that it was a special gift. Now, on that note, with the original series, when you guys are in the writer's room and coming up with new additional characters for future episodes, do you think Elizabeth or Tyso or something like oh, that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, you know, I'm not, it, it, it's awesome to, to imagine like the 1% of the television audience, you know, you always want to keep like the 99% like totally engaged, but you think like that 1% you're totally going to blow their minds. It's, it's always, you know, it's such a thrill. Um, I always love doing that. And how much will Tim the Biocomputer be featured? Every episode, for okay. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a, there was an incredible uh, Tim uh, dialogue that Danny contributed that, uh, you know, as soon as I heard a... <laughs> no, it was, I was in the cutting room. They needed an English voice, so I did Tim, and I'm still Tim. He's got a, just a great sort of know-it-all snarkiness. That, like, yeah, it's yeah, funny, you yeah. Can't I, pass that. And I, th I think I, 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 I spoke the way my mother always wished I would speak, <laughs> as Tim, <laughs> instead of this, like, you know, North, North London rebel. What kind of big arc are you guys planning for your first season? I mean, where do you see this going? Because we, you kind of bookended it in your first episode in a weird way. Yeah, with him sort of taking the strange path of being yes. a being a double agent. Yes. Um, well, th that's sort of that's the twist. We're not planning on 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 mixing it up on that sort of seismic level every episode. Like I think we really like the dynamic of him trying to, to, to live with a foot in both Ultra and the world of the Tomorrow people, both the world of humans and, you know, the world of, of his new species. And, um, you know, for a while we're just playing the complications of, of him making that impossible balancing act. Are you just bombing us everywhere? Are we, are we done? Did you just kill us? See what Handsome has to say. What was the question? Well, where the story arc is going to go this season, we we didn't expect oh, for your right. character Stephen to have actually done something as dramatic as he did in, in the pilot, and it seemed like that would be something that would be at the end of the first season. So where do you go from now? Yeah, it's it's nice, you know. It, it doesn't. It, it's always nice when you surprise people because you don't want the you don't want to be able to tell where the story is going whenever it's going there. And uh, I just finished reading episode three, and a reveal had me fooled. And if you can if you can fool somebody who's you know who knows the universe really well and is working with uh, the people who are writing those story arcs, I think you're doing a great job. I was blown away by a uh, a, a bomb dropping in the third episode. So these guys are killing it. Robbie, did you watch the original Tomorrow People, and also what attracted you to the world? I didn't watch it in the 70s, because I was, I wasn't even thought. Um, but uh, when when I when I read the script, I, I went back and I checked out the, um, on YouTube, I found a few of the episodes, and I could tell that, you know, although although there were going to be some homage, there was going to be some, uh, some homage to it and some similarities, it's, you know, it just doesn't work as, as that show doesn't work in modern television, it's, 
uh, it's a 1970s TV show. But um, but it was nice to go back and pull from something and, and notice that they're going to have storylines from several seasons. I think there was how many episodes? Were there? They did a ton of episodes and time traveling gets involved. Like oh, they're in spice at one yeah, point. Yeah, it's, <laughs> there's it's this huge universe to be able to pull from. And it's really nice to know that that that's there because our writers room and, and our executive producers are so creative that being able to mix all of their ideas with you know a, almost I think it's close to a hundred or something episodes of television to pull from we've got endless opportunity. Greg Greg Berlant is obviously also doing Arrow which is about the transition of an anti-hero into a hero. This is really about the transition of, of, of innocence into mm. super people. Why, why, why do you think those transitional stories are particularly relevant to 2013? Why, why now? I, I, hopefully every generation has has that in them to to say I'm not my father. Mm. I th- and I, I think especially with uh, where the 70s show came out of was the 60s. Um, it was based on that David Bowie song, all pretty things. The fact that he was watching a new generation of youth rebelling against the short hair, uh, post-war. Um, uh, public school kind of world, you know, people were growing their hair, experimenting with drugs, experimenting with sexuality, and, you know, he was reveling in that, and, and, and I think right now it's the same thing too, I think we need to keep doing that, you know, I've looked at music for a long time now and gone, where's punk rock, you know, where is it, I mean, it's, it's you know, where's new wave, where's um, disco, where's something, you know, where's, where's, the, where's house music, where, what's the next thing, it's not coming, and so so I think hopefully in television, uh, you know, we can start to provoke something like that. Is it fun playing that kind of a complex hero? Um, it, it's, uh, I mean, I think it's every actor my age's dream. Um, you know, you always look for the role that you know you're going to have fun in, with superpowers, that action. But what you don't normally get with that is a character so dark at the beginning and with such a complex upbringing, you know. Uh, having become the man of the house at a young age, having the struggle of losing his father and not really knowing why and never being told why or explained why, um, dealing with these these problems that he doesn't know what's wrong with him and thinking he's just following in his father's footsteps, the mental pro- problems, waking up in weird places. When I when I spoke to Danny, I said, you know, what are what are your ideas for this character? And he said, watch Donnie Darko. And uh, it's it's the whole thing where if these if this was happening to you, it would be terrifying. Not hearing your own inner monologue, hearing some some girl talking in your head, and and waking up in the middle of you know a, a, a highway in the middle of the night would be you you would have no idea what to do about it. And and then on top of that, having your poor single mother working triple shifts to pay for your doctors and your shrinks and your pills, you know, it puts a ton of weight on them. And uh, I think it's a great origin story of finding out that there isn't anything wrong with them. You know, he's, he's the next step in evolution. He's got, uh, he's got superpowers that are starting to emerge. And, you know, maybe his dad isn't the guy he thought he was. It's, it's, it's a dream come true. Can you talk a little bit more about 